first, it's the logos. Logos matter. The way you look matters. Where you show up matters. The second of it is really creating the visibility and the exposure for more people to see you. So I always feel like being in the media and getting that kind of exposure allows you to skip time for more and more people to see you. Because the more stages, the more people, the more clubhouse, the more fireside, the more people you're speaking to on an intimate level, one-on-one. Because when you're on TV, you're speaking to that person in their living room. It's one-on-one. I know you think it's millions, but it's really each individual person as we go along. Welcome to Marketing and Mindset for Wellness Coaches, the podcast for health coaches and wellness entrepreneurs just like you who are building a business, making the world a healthier place, and designing a first-class life. I'm your host, Kim Foster, MD and certified business coach, and I'm on a mission to help you up-level your strategy and raise your mindset so you can truly thrive and grow your business. Let's get started. Welcome to today's episode. I am so excited to be bringing this episode to you today because we are going to be talking about publicity. And this is such a powerful marketing tactic for your coaching business. Publicity has the potential to get you a lot of attention very quickly. It can grow your business like crazy and introduce you and your work to a ton of your ideal clients all in one go and you know get you in front of them. And the other beautiful thing about publicity is that it is free. Unlike advertising, this is not pay to play. Now, to be clear, what I mean by publicity is getting featured in the media, whether that's mainstream media like national TV or major publications like glossy magazines, and also local media like your local radio station or your local newspaper. So as you have probably gathered, It's not always easy to get featured in the media. Getting publicity for your business is a bit of an art and a science. So to help us out today, I've got a fantastic guest with me. Her name is Beth Nydick, and Beth is a former TV producer and New Jersey-based publicity and business strategist and expert. She helps entrepreneurs to go from undiscovered to unforgettable, and with a roster of celebrity and rising entrepreneurs entrepreneur clients, she knows what it means to be truly ready for the spotlight. Beth herself has been featured in a whole bunch of places like Oprah, Parade, Forbes, Tory Burch, Better Homes and Gardens, and she's also appeared on the Dr. Oz show, The Chew, and The Tonight Show. So it is safe to say that Beth knows a thing or two about the media and about how to be truly ready for publicity and how to make the most of those opportunities. Now, I know you're going to want to listen to this entire interview, but make sure you do stay ready right until the end, because I'm going to be telling you about the back to school promotion for my coach certification program, the Wellness Coach Academy. And that includes the best pricing we have ever offered for this program. And to be honest, this promotion is almost over and you definitely don't want to miss out. All right, without further ado, let's dive into my conversation with Beth. All right, today I am very excited to be chatting with Beth Nydick, who is a former TV producer and New Jersey-based publicity and business strategist. Welcome to the podcast, Beth. It is so great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to get started with you and really talk about what it's like to actually get your business the exposure it deserves so it can be successful. It's such a little thing, but it's so important. Yeah, I agree completely. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I'm so excited to learn from you, uh, you know, personally and, (laughs) and really just talk about media and publicity, how to get your brand media ready, all of that stuff. I know that this is a topic of just of a great deal of interest, actually, for so many of my listeners. And I know that people are going to get they're going to be on the edge of their seat to hear your tips. But before we get there, um, I would just like to give my listeners just a bit more context about you first. Like, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your story. What was the journey that brought you to this work that you're doing now? I'm so glad we're starting with this because I know you have a lot of health and wellness professionals listening. And I am am, was a health and wellness professional. I started my business uh, about how to teach other moms how to feed their kids food they would actually eat that is healthy. And Hmm. did like cooking classes in my kitchen. You know, I got certified by IIN and I did health 
health classes and I worked at gym. So, you know, I was, I had my own practice for years and years as a health coach, uh, really trying to build my, you know, build my presence online, build my, my audience off and online, do some grassroots. Um, you know, I even worked at, I was like the head of nutrition at a lifetime gym near me. Like I was really in that space of it. Um, and in 2015, I got picked up by Dr. Oz, a producer had found my stuff on my stuff, my posting on Facebook. So when they say just post good content, yes, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes it does happen where people come calling. And I worked with Dr. Oz staff for about two years being on the show and being on their website, um, which really gave me the insight into how people perceive health and wellness professionals in the media world. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. That's, that's, that's fantastic. What an experience. So, okay. And so then that really kicked you off into this whole world. And then, I mean, maybe tell us what happened from there. Like, where did things go from there for you? From there, I was like, okay. So I really enjoyed working one-on-one. I had some group programs, but I was like, I'm going to be on bigger stages. How do I do that? How do and everyone kept saying to me, like, I'm sure a lot of people listening, people keep saying to you, you need a book, you need a TED talk, you need a product. And I was like, okay, what do I have in my past? Meaning, what am I a superpower about? What can I be doing that can really get me somewhere? And I was like, oh, cocktails. (laughs) Not everybody. Lots of people like cocktails. But I was a bartender in college and really (laughs) worked with my clients. You know, I I worked with mommies of, of lots of little kids, teenagers, and they were like, okay, can I have a glass of wine on Saturday night? Or they would come back to me and be like, I'm not losing weight or I feel crappy. And I'd be like, oh, you had three margaritas on sun- on Sunday morning or Sunday night, whatever, you know, two, <laughs> whatever it was, you know, two Bloody Marys Sunday morning. And, you know, and I just realized that my clients were killing themselves and then mm. shooting themselves in the foot by having a mojito, you know, mm. on Thursday night with dinner because they didn't understand. They understand the food, right? Low fat, high protein, low, whatever it is, low, always low sugar, low dairy, all that stuff. But they didn't really translate that into their cocktails. Mm. So um, I had actually, I also at that time had a food product and I was doing a, a health fair and I met this woman, Tara Rossioli, her company's Highway to Well. And I just liked her. There was something about her that I liked. She's a doer. I know like you, Kim, too. You're a doer. Mm. I, that's how I am. And I was always looking for people like that. So I had had this book idea. I'd been shopping it around, which means you know, having coffee with people and people telling me, friends of mine, colleagues being like, that's a great idea. I'd love to be involved and never hearing from them again. (laughs) But when I sat down with Tara, who's also an eye health coach, and I think she's getting her master's actually, um, I told her the idea. And in three weeks, we had the start of the proposal written. We had people talking about it. It was like, oh, I, I found the right person. Um, and unbeknownst to me and a little bit to her, one of her clients actually was a, um, a New York times bestseller two times over. And she was very generous and introduced her to us, to her agent, her agent loved my book idea. And we were published within, I think 12 months. Hmm. Wow. That's fast for the publishing industry. Yes. (laughs) The joke in my house is that I was drunk for the first three months of that year because my (laughs) kids would come home from school and I'd be like passed out on the couch because I had been tasting and creating drinks all morning with my friends. <laughs> so it was oh an interesting, goodness. you know, thank God my kids are older. I don't have little kids. Yeah. My kids are older at that time. <laughs> um, you know, and the, so the, you know, we got published, the book came out and I don't know if you know how much about publishing, but you know, a publicist at a publishing house has 25 books on their desk. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, what can we do to get this out there? And I just realized that I had all this information on how to get my product out there, how to get myself in front of the right people that I just wasn't utilizing. And this opportunity, having the book, having it well-received, um, gave me the opportunity to kind of flex those muscles, um, which was a blessing. You know, I'll, let me go back a little bit. So I'll tell you like the business side of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you know, like I said, I was on Dr. Oz and I had great segments. The first segment, um, I killed it. That's why they invited me back. It was a great segment. I made avocado deviled eggs with Dr. Oz. It's Mm. on my website if anyone wants to see the video. Oh, I definitely. But what happened was, yeah, I'm like, my hair's really short in that video. Um, What what happened was I got home so excited about being on TV and I, you know, my friends were calling. It was like this big, you know, hoo ha. And then three days later, when I sat down at my desk and realized my opt in was paused. Oh, no. Yeah. 
I know it still hurts. It was years ago, but it still hurts. So what, what transformed for me in that moment was, okay, I have all this information. I see so many people doing this. So many people stuck in this way. I can really help them. And that's when Beth Nidic media was really born. It was out of making sure that nobody that I cared for and in the, you know, in the larger entrepreneur sense, like, you know, we're a community, we need to help each other. I don't want anybody else to, to have that feeling years ago, like I do right now just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a painful one. For, that sounds terrible. Okay, but obviously you, you made it past that moment. And yes. and so now, Thank like God. fast forward to now, tell me, you know, what, so t- tell me a little bit more about like what you're exactly doing now. Like who, who are you helping and, and exactly how are you helping them? So now what I do is I really help health and wellness professionals and some media personalities to make sure their business is ready for the media. Because I, I, I come across so many websites or so many um, people's information and there's there's not a holistic, I can tell there's not a holistic view of their business. They're not looking at their business on, from the outside, how customers are coming in, how their messaging is hitting, or even if they're, they have an email list. Kim, I can't tell you how many clients of mine when they came to me like I have New York Times bestsellers, I have media personalities. None of those people have email lists or they mm. have 400 people on them. Mm. So they're missing out on a big piece of it or they don't have a real message. So I really work with my clients, not only teaching them how to get press, but how to make sure their business is ready for it. And I also have a team of publicists on my staff that if that's something that you'd want to work with as well. So you get me as a business coach with an eye to publicity and you get a publicity arm of that to really help you you know, get those segments that you might not be able to get on your own. So it's really mm. like a, I, I call it a 360 holistic view of your business. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Because it's not just, I mean, there's so much more to it than just getting the publicity, like you, like your own personal story demonstrated. Mm-hmm. If you're not actually ready to optimize it and capitalize, then what's, you know, it's a whole lot of effort for little return potentially. So Okay, this is great. I love this. So, so tell me a little, because I think that really, you know, let's dig into this whole how to get your brand media ready for, because you're right, all of my listeners are health and wellness professionals of some sort of variety. And, um, but right. this whole topic of like publicity, getting featured in the media, I think it's something that holds a lot of mystique for entrepreneurs. Like, what do you need to do to, to capitalize on this? First of all, to make your business and your brand even intriguing enough that the media is interested in featuring you. But I'd love to like maybe unpack the term media ready and and just kind of describe like what what do you mean by that? What that means is that you are ready for somebody to find you on the internet, to see your information somewhere and to go deeper into your business and still be able to see who you are, what you're talking about and what the content is that you really focus on. Like what your niche is, what your thing is, right? You have a lot of health and wellness professionals. If you, if anyone out there is listening, say, well, I help women lose weight. It's not enough. Mm-hmm. You, there's, there needs to be that kernel. That's something special that just you are about. And uh, most of that comes from your story. Like my story. I don't want anyone else to feel like I feel right now, even thinking about it. Now. I don't want anyone else to like have a, a, a opportunity and squander it because they're not ready. So not having a really dialed in message and really understanding what your story is, is makes makes you not media ready. Mm -hmm. But I want to like quantify that. Like, so if, think of it this way, say you meet, I I used to meet media professionals, like in the bars in the city, in New York city, Say you meet somebody (laughs) and they work for a a NBC, they work, let's go big already. They work for the Today Show, right? Let's go big. (laughs) And they hear, there's, let's set the stage. You're in a bar having Bloody Marys with your friend on a Sunday morning. And you're talking about your business. And there's an NBC Today Show re- producer behind you listening. They get your name. They go on your Instagram. What are they finding? What's the message? When they click your, click your link in bio, where are they going? How are you capturing their email? Once you capture their email, how are you capturing their attention? And how are you keeping it? And how are you making them feel part of what you're creating? And and how are you making them feel like they want to be it all in on you and what you're about and how you help people? Mm, that's so good. So, well, how do people, yeah, like tell me about how do people go about even taking stock of that? Like, how do you do that audit on yourself? Like, because we're all so close to our own businesses, right? So how do you recommend that people get started with that? Well, one way to do that is to survey the audience you already have. Ask them the questions that you're wanting to know. Like, I actually am writing a survey. I was working on it this morning. 
you know, working on my next product. So I'm going to ask my audience what they want is my next product, what kind of help they need. But if you have an assistant, a best friend, a colleague, your girl gang, who, you know, whoever it is in your, in your industry or in your business, if you have like a friend, do it for each other, audit each other's business. I always say, ask your mom because she'll give you the real deal. If she knows about (laughs) social media, right. You know, like ask your friend of me, somebody who's actually going to be like, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. No, we don't want that. Be like, right. yo, Beth, you have three mistakes in spelling on your content six weeks ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I want you to be able to find somebody or you could ask me you, and there's people you could hire, you know, for an hour mm-hmm. to go through your stuff. I do that too, but it's really going through it or finding somebody that you admire and see if they have that string, that string that really connects everything. And then I might give you a, a better view on how you can go back to yours and connect everything. because. If you look at the people who are big in your industry, who are killing it, and remember, not everyone that looks like they're killing it is actually killing it, but people who are actually <laughs> killing it, right? They, they, that's what they have. They have that one string that goes through everything, and they think about how their audience is going to interact with it. Mm, that's good. Okay, so so you're talking about like using examples, like comps kind of thing for inspiration without getting all sort of stuck in comparisonitis and feeling the despair. Mm, but right. but looking at others, like people who, like you said, legitimately are killing it and what is the through line? Like what is that thread that is makes their brand cohesive and consistent and all of that, right? Yeah, and what makes them what makes them get you to be on board with them? Mm. It's kind of like a hook, you know, right? Like, you need that unique hook. Right. Or that unique personality or that actually being authentic and coming out on, on, on your social meeting, like doing your stories, doing face FTC, face to camera and saying how hard it is that your kid's going to college or you're so worried about kindergarten and it's starting in three weeks. Like it doesn't just have to be, here's how to make zucchini or here's how to correct your hormones. Like if you want people to be in on you, they need to know who you actually are. And that's allowing them to be in on everything about you. Because I think that, that, you know, there's that line to cross. Like my kids were never online until they were old enough to tell me they could be, Mm. you know, and a lot of kids didn't, a lot of people put their kids online, right? That's not something that I did, but if you, you want somebody to be in on you and like, cause if you want to create a membership a Facebook group, anything where you are interacting with them every day, they have to be in on who you are. If you're just doing passive products and you're selling that kind of stuff, it's a different relationship you have with your audience. But if you want people to sign up for everything you do, every summit you're on, every conference that you do, every paid work class, you know, master class or that kind of stuff, they have to be in on who you are and get to know actually who you are and not just what your business is about. Yeah, that's a really good reminder because I think that a lot of people, and I think especially in the beginning, I do see many entrepreneurs and new coaches are very like kind of put on this personal, like professional persona, right? And just a very right. um, protected behind the curtain kind of thing. But you got to really peel back that curtain. And I do, I do always tell people like you get to decide how much you of you you share. Like what you just said about you know you didn't put your kids on social media until they were old enough to tell you that they wanted that or not. Um, so you get to decide you know where your boundary is and what is just personal and private to you. But peeling back that curtain and letting people see behind the scenes is so it's just so helpful for that connection it is and then when you you want to get the press involved they can see that you're a real person right they can see how you speak they can see how people interact with you because when you want to be say let's go back to the today show because why not go big yeah the today show is looking for your content right like i so i don't think i mentioned this i didn't mention this i'm also a cocktail cookbook author (laughs) so (laughs) you know so you'll see me on tv doing, making cocktails, right? So I want to go on the Today Show making cocktails. They, so somebody finds me from the Today Show where they get my pitch and they finally open it. They will go to my Instagram and see if I'm making cocktails and see how I'm looking, how I'm sounding, how, how I feel, what my charisma is, right? They'll go to my website to make sure it's the same thing. And then they'll see who's commenting or they'll see if anyone's commenting me because no matter what media you're on, that producer wants you to bring your audience. Mm. Right. So when it gets to the media part and it's it's the business part too, like it's not about you anymore. It's about how your audience sees you, how they feel about you and how they interact with you. And the same thing when you're getting to media, they're thinking about how you are going to feed or uh, what's the right word, how you're going to serve their audience. Mm. And if you can serve their audience in a unique way, that's the win. 
right? So let, let's bring it back a little bit because if, I think that I might probably freaked out a lot of people by going directly to the Today Show. <laughs> like, like, let's do... So my first TV experience, like really trying to work out how I was going to do this on TV, was my kids' high school television station. Hmm. Like, that's a great place to start because you can practice. You can yeah. make mistakes. You know, people in your town are watching. Guess how in they're going to be on you because you tried. So don't think, you know, I've looked, how, <laughs> how many times have I done, I'm, and I mean national TV and forgotten ice when I'm making a cocktail. <laughs> like last last week I dropped a bowl when I was do I was doing a San Antonio morning news. I literally dropped the bowl off my desk and the anchor went, oops, like no one cares. You know, like I'm gonna take that piece away from everybody. But being on your local news or being in your in your in your temple or your church's newsletter, being on a friend's newsletter, like that's media too. I don't want anyone thinking that they have to go big. Going small and being in in front of your friend's email list, say they have a hundred people. Hey, you're in a room with a hundred people. So I want people to think about it that way and start thinking the because um, so many people come to me, they're like, I want to be on Good Morning America. And my answer is me too. Yes. <laughs> you know, so do I. So, but let's start with local. Let's start with where you can practice, where you can hone your craft, because being in the media is honing your craft because you need to be able to tell me who you are, tell me why I should care, and then get me to care. Yeah, that's great. I like that, uh, you know, just that whole framework. But I really love the idea. I mean, of course, it's awesome to to have the big vision and the like long term, you know, moonshot of where we're going with this with like the Today Show and Good Morning America and all that. Um, but that's you're not going to start there. And it wouldn't be a great idea to me. I mean, you tell me what you think, but it wouldn't be a great idea to start there anyway, because you're just not experienced enough. And you don't really necessarily know how to handle yourself in that kind of situation. So getting your like, your chops on smaller local places that are easier to get into and featured on anyway. That's, that's the, that's the best place to start. It seems to me. Oh, a thousand percent. Like don't tell good morning America. No, you know, like, yeah. call me right away and I'll help you through it. You know, get a media <laughs> trainer and get somebody out. Uh, you know, when I got, got Dr. Oz, I hadn't been on a lot of TV, but I'm a former producer. So I knew how it worked. Right. You know, I had already done through, I already gone through media training, but like, yeah, start where you can. And if that means starting in your kitchen on your own Instagram, start in your kitchen on your own Instagram. I used to do Sunday, my, Sunday night dinners. I would literally go on at six o'clock and cook a three course meal. My kids and my husband were so happy about it. But I would, co I would cook a three course meal on Instagram on, and then on both my Facebook pages. Like I had two computers, my phone, because at that time there wasn't, you couldn't do it the way you can do it now. Now you can. Um, what's a, there's an app you can use. I can't see the name of it. I'm sure if you Google, you can find it where you can stream to everything at once. Start just yeah. making dinner in front of the camera, right? Like start doing whatever your specialty is doing it in front of the camera to your people. And that's the way you'll grow. And that's the way you'll get people in. And that's the way that you'll have the content for people to understand who you are and where you're coming from. And then, and then it's getting your business ready for it. Yeah. And it's also a great way, like that suggestion is is a great way to get your comfort and confidence with the visibility piece. Because I think that that's a thing that freaks a lot of people out too. Right. But but so starting small, growing your comfort, getting used to that feeling of being visible, being you know on camera or in the spotlight in whatever way it is, because then you'll be ready to sort of ladder up from there. So do you have any tips for how to get started with finding like those you know, once you're ready to branch out from just, you know, broadcasting on your own Instagram or whatever, um, you know, to find local media outlets and things like what, what sort of tips do you have around that? Okay. So I'll give you my number one. I usually don't tell anybody, but my clients, but cause it's Kim, I'll tell everybody. So <laughs> this is what I want everybody to do. I want you to literally go to your town's Facebook page and post this, who knows somebody that works in media. Hmm. I, that's it. Just that you're going to get a response. I don't care. I know people are like, you live in Jersey, Beth, everyone. No, I've done this with people who live across the country and across the world. Something pops up because somebody always knows somebody and people actually want to help. So I always say, start with who you know, go through your phone, you know, go through your alumni newsletter. Who do you know from somewhere that works in media? Because maybe if, you know, your friend works for Bloomberg, Bloomberg News and you're not and you're a health coach, maybe that's not a fit. But guess what? That friend knows people and what you do. So it's oh, just yeah. getting the courage 
to ask for help, to receive help, and then utilize the help that you've given. Because a that. warm lead is so much easier than a cold lead. And if you can have enough, I don't know, confidence to write on Facebook that, then you're going to grow enough confidence to be able to do what you want to do. I Honestly, I was watching The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston last night. <laughs> one Kevin of the best Costner, yeah. Ever. And Kevin Costner. <laughs> and Kevin Costner said this line. He was like, I'm afraid, but I take the fear with me and I keep moving until it goes away. Something like that. I'm sure I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I was like, yeah. there's this quote that I love. is like having true talent is being able to take it through the fear and into the light. So if That's you can cool. just keep that thought with you, like I'm afraid, everybody's afraid. This sucks. Everyone thinks this sucks. Nobody that I know, even if they're a long term media person, doesn't feel nervous before the red light goes on. So right. you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing. And for you to be successful, you have to. I, and I'm going to piss a lot of people off. If you want to be successful, you have to show up on camera. And that's, that's being, that's, that's, I, that's being honest. And that's being a hundred percent. If you're saying Beth and Kim, I just can't show up on media that I, that I'm going to say to you either let's figure out a way for you to do it or go work for somebody else. And mm. I, I say it all the time and it's not to be mean and to be an, uh, to be a bleep, but it's my honest truth. And it's, it's, it saves you time and energy because if you really don't think you can get there, then you're spinning your wheels. And I want you to do something that's more productive for your, for your life, because there's plenty of people that can do it that will hire you because you're good at what you do. But yeah. I'm going to caveat that a little bit. But if you and I have a conversation or you talk to Kim or you talk to your mentor, or you talk to your best friend, we're going to convince you that you can because everybody in this world can do it. Everybody. It's just how far you're willing to push yourself. Yeah, I love that. I really appreciate that real talk on on that particular point um, because it is such a it's such a mental hurdle for so many. Um, but it's just it's so important, and I love that. I mean, I say that all the time: feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, but I I kind of like that Costner said it many years ago. <laughs> cool. I know I'll have to bring I'll have to find like what he actually said. But I was like, yeah. oh, I have to remember that. I liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who doesn't love the movie Bodyguard? Okay, excellent. So that is such a genius tip of posting on your town's Facebook page and just making a simple ask because people like I agree with you totally, Beth, like people do want to help. But if you're not asking, then they don't really know what you need help with, right? Like they're not just gonna, you know, nobody's gonna volunteer this information. But if you just simply ask, then people love making warm introductions and things like that. That's what I found anyway. I don't know if that's what you found. Oh my God, a thousand percent. So when we were in the midst of the book, um, the agent that we had finally went with, he just wasn't answering us. And I, we were just, I was like, we're not big enough. He works with like Joan Collins. You know, I don't know why he picked us in the first place, <laughs> but I literally put on my face, my town's Facebook page, who knows a book agent, eight perfect strangers. And I mean, don't know me, maybe knew my name, but didn't know who I was. Put me in touch with book agents that they were friends with, like just to be generous. And yeah. if you, if you're scared, Go through your town's Facebook page and look at all the other people that have been asking for stuff. They're not just looking for lawnmowers and electricians, like literally looking for help and people want to help. And I always tell this to my kids, and I hope you guys can take this with you too. When you, uh, when you walk into a room, everybody in that room wants to be your friend. That's the way you have to think. That's the mindset. So when you are online, everybody online wants to be your friend. Everybody online needs to hear what you're doing because if not, you're doing a disservice to the world. Like whatever your thing is to hold on to, to be able to, to hit send or pick up that phone or send that text, do it because it, what, I know you, Kim, you know this, once you do it, you're like, why didn't I do that 10 years ago? Like, why didn't I do that last week? Right? Like you, yeah. we hold ourselves back and then we're like, oh, that wasn't so hard. Yeah. And so yeah. if you can move through it like that, listen to this 10 times, DM me. Like I, I get, you know, I'm, I'm big on, I, D, I I'm in my own Instagram. I'm in my own DMs. Like and I mean it. A lot of people don't do it, but I actually mean it. You need like, you need a little pep. I'll give you a little pep. Kim will give you a little pep. Like we all need to, to be able to start having these conversations where, yeah, this is really hard and stop having the conversation. Like just do it. You can, because that doesn't work. Yeah. If you can acknowledge how hard it is and be like, oh my God, Kim and Beth think it's hard too. Then why am I thinking it's hard? Right. You know, whatever it is to hold on to, but I want everyone to really have that conversation and start asking your friends, like, I'm having a hard day. Can you, can we just talk for 10 minutes? And then like, oh, me too. Let's just talk for 10 minutes. And even if you're commiserating and complaining for 10 minutes, you will feel better after those 10 minutes. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Agreed. Oh my gosh, this is this is so great. And so, I mean, so I feel like we've we've got a bit of a sense of like what are the very first steps to take, and you know that you need to you know feel that fear and just bring that fear along with you, as Kevin Costner said, and just do it. Um, however, what I want to just kind of back just briefly back up the bus a little bit and talk about why, because I really find that it's helpful if people can really anchor into why they would want to be really putting themselves out of their comfort zone reaching out to the media, becoming more visible, like all these things that we've been talking about. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen, the benefits of being featured in the media for an entrepreneur, for especially, especially like health and wellness coaches and things. Okay. So I'll give you the superficial why. Okay. Say that Kim and I do the same exact thing, but you go to Kim's website and she's been on Thrive and Oprah and the Tiny Elephant and everything you read and everything you watch. And you come to mine and I have no logos on my website. The credibility that the press has given Kim should give you an indication of how great she is. That's one reason. That's the superficial reason why. Because yeah. logos matter. They do. You know, the way you look matters. Where you show up matters. Um, but I want to caveat that. That does not mean paying for media. It's a huge mm -hmm. thing right now. Do If somebody is coming to you with a paid for play opportunity, please say no and DM me or DM somebody <laughs> else. But like, please don't pay for it because you do not need to pay for it. So first, yeah. it's the logos. The second of it is really creating the visibility and the exposure for more people to see you. When I was on Dr. Oz, thousands more people came to my website that week than ever before. So I always feel like being in the media and getting that kind of exposure allows you to skip the line, meaning skip time for more and more people to see you. Because the more stages, the more people, the more clubhouse, the more fireside, the more people you're speaking to on an intimate level, one-on-one. -on -one. Because when you're on TV, you're speaking to that person in their living room. It's one-on-one. -on -one. I know you think it's millions, but it's really what each individual person um, goes as we go along. Um, mm -hmm. And also, the, the ability to scale through exposure versus making all the funnels and doing the classes, right, and doing the webinars and showing up on everybody else's Instagram, you can bypass that all with a little bit of exposure. And I always say, like, when you're starting out, get the grassroots exposure. I want your whole town to be behind you. Then I want your county to be behind you. Then I want you to be famous in your state, right? Moving through there because you're growing the credibility. And I always say, if your business is based on referrals, you're doing something right. You know, having mm -hmm. the outside coming in, that's going to work too. But if your base, most of your business is on referrals because people like what you do, they like what you say, and they've seen you do it. So just do that on a bigger scale and you'll have more people in, in your funnels and more people meeting in your business and more people uh, singing your praises because that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So the benefits are that credibility, like that authority that you just you know, have, you just absorb it when people see that you've been featured in a variety of places and, you know, just that it just automatically boosts your authority. But then legitimately, like the actual exposure, like you just get to be in front of so many more people so like quickly, like so scalable. Oh, so scalable and positioning yourself as that thought leader. Like if I'm on, I got, you know, my, I'm working towards a GMA dream. I want to be making some cocktails in GMA and, and Drew Barrymore. But if I'm on those shows, right, the credibility that affords me because I've been vetted already, just like mm -hmm. I'm on this podcast, Kim vetted me. She knew who I was before I came on because I was quality to bring on the show. If she, if she didn't vet me, then why would you trust her? Right. Because I've, of course, I've listened to a whole bunch of your podcasts, Kim, and they're amazing. <laughs> but like the quality of people you have on this podcast, I'm honored to be included. And I want your the listeners to feel the same way about what yeah. they're doing, right? So surrounding yourself with the right people, positioning yourself in the right way, and then scaling that using media. You know, other people say, no, they don't want to do media. They do it a different way. I just, I don't know. I'm a middle child. I like people to look at me. I like exposure. <laughs> like, to be completely honest, like, that's, that's one of my whys is because, like, I like to be in the front of the room. Mm. So figure out how you like it to work for yourself, how you want your business to structure and how you want to use what's available to you to get to where you want to go. And I just think that being on TV and doing fun stuff is much more fun. Like I did, a, I did an event two years ago with uh, Fuji water. My kids keep talking about how I brought home cases of Fuji water. Like how good <laughs> does that make me feel? Right. And I got paid for, I got paid to work with a brand and I had a really fun time. And guess what? I got clients out of it. That's because awesome. I shared it, you know, the, the leverage part of it, we didn't really talk about that part is like, after you get the exposure, like what you do with it.
but right. that piece of it is what actually brings in the money. But for me, it's just more fun than sitting yeah. in front of my desk all day, you know, making cocktails in, at 8.30 in the morning with a morning show, like, and live TV is my most favorite thing to do. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's just, and it is so, I mean, so powerful and fun, like exactly like you said. And, and I really, I do love your tip about like, don't pay for that. Like that's another, I mean, it's yeah. really another benefit is that it's free, right? Like to get publicity um, because they, I mean, I also want, we didn't really talk about this either, but you know, producers and, and people who are in control, like of the, you know, the gatekeepers of the media outlets, whatever it is, they need content and they're looking for good people to, to feature and to bring on and that kind of thing. So I think that's important to keep in mind too. Right. That's their job. Their job is to find you. So make it easy for them to find you. And and then I'll give you this a, l- a little bit too. So a small nas- regional and you know area uh, news stations got really hurt by the pandemic and had to let go of a lot of their staff. Mm-hmm. So one producer is doing the work of three producers now. So if you can get that one producer a pitch or an email or an introduction and you're like, I can do this and this is going to feed your audience and serve your audience this way, this way, and this way. It's a no brainer to put you on their air. It is the, it is the time for local news. If you have, if it's something you've ever always wanted, this is the time for you to do it because they need you. And that's the way I want everyone to think about the news and to think about the media in general. Yes. There's a lot of competition to get noticed, but they need you to do their jobs, right? They need content, your content. So if you're con- doing this work, it will happen. It just ta- it takes a little time. I don't want anyone thinking they're going to send one email and it's going to work. Right. It usually takes, a, you know, big, the bigger the station, the longer it takes. And that's why I'll give you guys another real shortcut. Call your local station. So, hi, my name is Beth. Can I speak to your lifestyle producer? I, I'm interested in doing a segment about zucchini. And obviously it'd be more, it'd be how zucchini can really get takeaway wrinkles. You know, not that it can, but you know what I mean? Like whatever, <laughs> what, you know, whatever your thing is, but just like, I'm going to challenge everybody, pick up the phone, call your local news station. Hi, can I speak to the lifetime lifestyle producer? Cause we're in health and wellness. Can I talk to your health and life, health and wellness producer? Get in the phone, that producer, tell them who you are in two sentences, tell them what your idea is in three, and then listen and see what they say. They're going to say, send me an email. That sounds amazing. Can you send me some more information? Great. When can you be on? I will keep your information. Keep in touch. That's the answers you're going to get. No one's going to hang up on you. No one's going to yell and scream at you. How dare you call me? None of that's going to (laughs) happen. We're going to be like, thank God someone's calling me. I need help. So I'm going to challenge everyone that's listening to do just that and then post and tag him and I. Definitely. Yes. Challenge. The gauntlet has been thrown down. I love that. (laughs) That is, that's such a genius idea. And it's so simple. And I'm sure that when people heard that, they're like terrified. I'm not going to do that. But just remember Kevin Costner's words and just do it. Um, Because I think I agree totally. I I can, and and such a good point about like local media outlets really having to scale back because of the pandemic. So they, they are desperately in need of people. Like they're just sitting there, you know, just drowning and waiting for not waiting, but you know, if somebody were to just call them exactly like you described, it's like just a gift from heaven. So, you know, on both sides, because you're creating a relationship. They're like, you know, if somebody called me like that when I was in TV, I'm like, oh, Kim's amazing. She knows what she wants to do. She knows how she wants to do it. I'm going to keep Kim on my, on my, I almost had Rolodex because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep her on my short list. You know, I, I, and, and I want to give you guys one more thing. I, I don't want to f- anyone to feel like, oh, Beth, that Beth doesn't get scared. Beth, are you kidding me? I wake up almost every morning and I tell myself, be brave. Mm. Just that. Sometimes it's just be brave. But be be brave because some days it's like you, it's hard. Like what we do is not easy because it's really about personal development, right? And how far we can push ourselves. So if you need a little help, close your eyes, go cl- close your eyes, no, <laughs> close your eyes and say, okay, be brave. And if that's be brave till 11 a.m. and then get back into bed and hide under the covers, you were brave for two hours. If you're going to be brave till 3 p.m., like what, if I need to be brave through this podcast, I need to be brave through this phone call. Just close your eyes before you do it. Five breaths in, five breaths out, and just say, be brave. 
I love that. That's it. Perfect. And that's a perfect note to end on. Yeah. I, that's fantastic. So yeah, now tell me where can listeners go to learn more about you and connect with you? I, I would really love to be able to direct them to some very specific places to, to, to get in touch with you. I appreciate that. You can find me Beth Nidick on every social media, but I'd love for you to go to bethnidick.com. And right there on the top, you can see my Media Spotlight magazine. It's 10 pages of articles and worksheets to get you and your business ready for media. That'll also get you into my emails and we get to hang out and talk and make suggestions and support um, because I, I love what I do and I know how much what you and I do in the world really makes it better. Um, so I appreciate your time today, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much. This has been a real pleasure. Okay, so there we go. Was that great or what? Beth was super generous with all kinds of amazing, actionable advice. And I definitely want you to actually implement some of those ideas, not just listen and absorb. Of course, that is always where the magic happens, right? I would really love to hear your thoughts about this one. Are you keen to get some publicity for your business? Did this episode give you some ideas for how to get your business media ready and how to get started? Let me know by finding me and Beth on Instagram and let us know. So as I mentioned at the top of this episode, I just want to draw your attention again to the fact that we are now enrolling for the September class of my training and certification program inside the Wellness Coach Academy. And like I said, we have a big back to school promotion happening right now, which includes, as I said, the best pricing we have ever offered on this program and likely will ever offer. So if you are feeling stuck in a job right now that does not light you up and you're passionate about wellness and helping other people and you've been craving the true freedom that comes with running your own business, then I would love for you to check out my certification program and then join us when the class starts at the end of September. In fact, my team and I have actually recently created a sample class where you can sign up to get free access to a whole collection of lesson excerpts, you know, to give you a sneak peek of the program and give you a taste of what's in store and help you decide if this program is right for you. So you can sign up for that sample class at wellnesscoachacademy.com forward slash sample. And like I said, our back to school pricing is only in effect until September the 17th. So you really do not want to delay. All right. That is a wrap for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have an amazing week and I will talk to you again very soon. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, if you enjoyed this episode and you're excited to learn even more about how to pursue a career as a health and wellness coach, I would love to invite you to attend my free online class called How to Chart a Path to Your Dream Career as a Wellness Coach, The Three Secrets for Stepping into a Meaningful New Career Without Wasting Time or Money. This class is especially for women who are interested in becoming wellness coaches and building a freedom-based business, but aren't sure how to get there and what to do first. Inside this workshop, I'll be teaching you the three biggest myths about health and wellness coaching that will hold you back and what the truth is instead. And I will also teach you the most important thing that you need to do to get transformative results for your clients, which will enable you to build a profitable business as a wellness coach and step into this incredible career. So if that sounds like something that you need to attend, then I invite you to grab a spot in this class. Head over to drkimfoster.com forward slash become a coach. And that's where you can reserve your seat. All the info is on that page, everything you need to know, and you can just go ahead and choose the time that works for you. And then I will see you there.